It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. If you're someone who lives in an area where it's so expensive to buy real estate and you feel like it's impossible, then I have something for you. I just released a free guide that's going to give you the eight steps you need to take to buy your first out-of-state property. I've bought several properties out of state, living in California, investing in Ohio, and you can do the same. It's just a matter of having the right information. So click the link in the description of this episode to get your free guide today. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Black Real Estate Dialogue podcast, episode 176. Before we jump in, please make sure you leave a five-star rating and review if you're on the audio side. It takes just a moment and it helps us to reach more people and spread this message all over the world. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All of that takes you like 10 seconds. And again, helps the channel grow, helps us to reach more people. So thank you all in advance for helping us in that area. All right. So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, another quick announcement before we jump in. I just released a free eight-step guide to buying your first out-of-state property. I know a lot of you live in expensive markets and you feel like it is impossible to invest in real estate where you live. If you fall into that category, definitely download this guide. It's 100% free. It'll outline eight steps that you must take to get you on your journey to start buying out-of-state properties. It's something that I've done over the last almost four years, and it's changed my life completely. So click the link in the description of this episode and definitely download that today. All right. So we got a lot to talk about today. Um, if you've been following on Instagram, I recently posted about a law that Florida is planning to pass that will restrict foreigners from certain countries from buying properties in Florida. So the way that this episode will go is I will share a little bit more context about what's going on and also provide my opinion. So this will be a quick one, but I think this is definitely something to unpack a little bit more. I posted on Instagram and got a lot of engagement. And so I wanted to have this opportunity to just dive in a little bit. So I'm going to read a bit from different articles and videos and stuff that I've that I've used to do some research so we can kind of understand what's going on. And then I'll go into uh, my opinion on the matter and how that affects you, how that affects current and aspiring investors. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll proceed in that way. Again, so a law in Florida is about to go into effect that will ban citizens from various countries from buying real estate in Florida. And so some of those countries are China, Russia, Venezuela, and a handful of other countries. And if this passes, which it looks like it's probably going to, folks from those countries will be banned from buying property in the US. And there is something specific, which I thought was pretty interesting. So they'll be prevented from buying within 10 miles of what's called critical infrastructure, such as airports, seaports, power plants, military installation, telecom switching office, wastewater or water treatment facilities, and refineries. And one of the things that I saw in my research is that all of those things pretty much block out Miami completely. Um, and, you know, there are some opinions I read about, I, I saw from folks in the industry, in the real estate industry in Florida. And as you can expect, uh, brokers in Florida feel like this is an attack on real estate in Florida. And something that I didn't know is that Florida is the top state for foreign real estate investment and China is the top source. And last year, China Chinese investors invested $6 billion in Florida real estate. So keep that in mind. It's going to make sense why I'm emphasizing that a little bit later. And another interesting data point is that the amount of Chinese investment in South Florida real estate has decreased since the pandemic, but Chinese investors are still investing in commercial real estate, things like shopping centers, office buildings. And another interesting thing is that parents of Chinese students are buying condos for their children who go to college in various areas of South Florida. So this broker is pretty much trying to make a case that this shouldn't go through. But if you think about it, if you are a broker or someone in the real estate space who has a pipeline of folks from other countries who are making investments in the deals you're working on, this is not something that you really want to hear. So if it's going to impact your individual bottom line, that's probably what you're going to think about. So it doesn't surprise me that folks 
within the industry in Florida don't want this law to go through. So, I mean, it makes, makes sense to me. Um, and the founder of a real estate firm and, and brokerage in Florida said, as it stands, the Florida bills can make it difficult for families to purchase homes for students studying in Florida. Is that something we really want to restrict? That's a fair point. I'm wondering if this thing goes through, will they make an exception for parents who are trying to buy properties for their students who are coming here to study? I'm not sure, but I think that'll be pretty interesting to see uh, how that works out. So let's get to the penalties. So if you do sell a house to an international buyer or some piece of real estate to an international buyer, you can face prison time or fines if you sell to a buyer from this restricted list that they have. So, you know, I don't think anybody wants to risk that if, if you know, if you're in the business. And there's actually a group of Chinese citizens who filed a lawsuit to try to block this law, as expected. I'm, I'm not surprised by that at all. So a little further detail, if this thing goes as planned, Chinese businesses and people who live in China and aren't U.S. citizens or residents and who currently own real estate in Florida would not be able to buy, to buy additional property after July 1st. And one of the things I'm wondering is, I mean, this has been a headline, not a headline, this has kind of been developing over the last couple of months and is, is I guess, resurging as of the last week or so. So I'm wondering if folks have been in a buying spree and trying to buy as much as they can prior to July 1st in case this goes through. If I get any information on that, I'll definitely be able to share that with you all. But that's just something that comes to mind that I wonder about as well. And so some additional context, I know we're talking a lot about Florida, but I do want to share a bit about other, other states in the country. So 25 states have laws pending or approved to prevent the Chinese government or Chinese affiliated companies from buying farmland. Uh, Florida, of course, has expanded this tremendously to cover various more areas of real estate. And again, it's the second most important industry in Florida after tourism. So this could have a tremendous impact if this does go through in Florida and perhaps could set a precedent for what other states may want to do. So definitely something worth keeping your eyes on. Um, so I'm going to get to some of, some of my thoughts. So as I mentioned earlier, $6 billion in sales of real estate in Florida. I'm wondering if they're mostly commercial or residential. And that's something that I'm pretty interested in learning more about. And then if this goes through, potentially there might be more properties available for U.S. citizens. But we also got to think about folks from other countries. For folks from countries that are not banned, will they try to get more into Florida real estate? Will those brokers and people in the business try to create relationships in other countries that have permission to invest in the U.S.? Who knows? But that's something I think worth thinking about. And also, you know, here's here's my opinion on it for sure. If there are countries where a U.S. citizen can't buy real estate, I don't think folks from that country who live in that country should be able to buy real estate in the country, in my opinion. You know, I think it's only fair. Obviously, there's a lot more behind that, but I, I think that's a reasonable thing to, to want. Um, and also, you know, I would say to you, the viewer, the, the investor, the current or aspiring investor, not to be too scared or even really too optimistic. You know, this is something that we have to see how it plays out and how it impacts the market and, and things of that nature. There's a lot of details that really aren't in here. Um, and so I think, you know, it's definitely something that we should keep our eyes on and not really speculate too much on what the impact will be. I mean, everybody has their ideas. I have my ideas. But definitely, you know, keep our eyes on it. And there were a lot of people in support of something like this in the Instagram comments. If you check that post out, a lot of people thought that this would be a great thing, thought that it will be more fair for American citizens and provide more opportunities to buy housing or commercial real estate, so on and so forth for American citizens. And could be true, could be true. I definitely understand uh, that perspective. Um, and so just wanted to recap just what's going on and just explain a little bit more uh, exactly what's what's going on and some of the research I've been able to do on this particular topic. So definitely something that I'm planning to keep my eyes on so I can keep you all updated. And you know we'll see if other states start to do similar things to try to prevent 
international certain countries from buying properties in in their respective states so that's all for today this is a quick one today just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that i can there's only so much i can cover in in an instagram reel so appreciate you all taking some time to tune in and again if you're on audio if you haven't left a five star rating and review please do so today take a moment to do that and it'll help us to spread this message all across the world if you're on youtube make sure you like make sure you share make sure you subscribe thank you all so much i look forward to talking to you all soon what's up y'all sam here from the black real estate dialogue podcast thank you so much for watching another episode definitely take a moment to subscribe make sure you like this video also visit our website blackrealestatedialogue.com and follow on instagram at blackrealestatedialogue talk to you soon